Yo, GPJ here, you know the deal, here for the title. All Honkai Star Rail team archetypes to explain, here we go. Any team that uses 1 DPS and 2 or 3 Harmony units to buff the ever-living hell out of the DPS. Any 2 Harmony, 1 DPS, 1 Sustain can be classified as a hypercarry team. You can swap out the Sustain for another Harmony units or a true hypercarry team. You would want to use a hypercarry team when you've invested heavily into only one of your DPS and you need to pay back that credit card debt you've racked from spending hundreds of dollars on that accursed relic domains for even a 1% improvement in your DPS grid value and your supports haven't reached 160 speed, therefore L plus ratio plus you fell off. 2. You're experiencing sunk cost fallacy in that specific team, so you need every single justification to use that said unit and to prove to the Redditors and Armchair Theory Crafters that this unit deals X amount of damage in this hyper niche scenario to not lose face, and then you step back and wonder if you can spend all this time and endeavor to simply touch grass. Examples of a hyper carry team include our general, Jing Yuan, Blade Bronya Sparkle, hyper carry. Herta in Pure Fiction, if you want to be cheeky about it. Argenti, of course. Or basically, any other top DPS units that need many support to reach their peak potential. Notice, peak potential, not optimal play. Kinda like how my family could support me if they just believed in my dreams of becoming a professional wrestler, but I have neither the talent, I don't have the height, and I cry way too easily. Moving on. Number 2. Dot or Damage Over Time Teams Any team that primarily deals with Dot or what I like to call them, Cancer. Important points if you want to play Dot teams. All of Dot teams, well not all, most of the Dot teams, like Jing Yuan, are backloaded as foo. Simply solve this issue by getting Kafka. Second, best team members are literally any Dot givers, like the funny trash guy, the entire circus, Luka Doncic, Darren Aronofsky's best film ever, encourage the Cowardly Dog as a sustainer since she gives attack percent buff and energy regeneration, and the Pretty Psychopath as the support for the team because she can give break effect boost, damage percent boost, and all type rest penetration. Also I have her at E1 so she can also ignore 20% defense, just an FYI. If you don't have Kafka, your dot teams will most likely not play optimally, which is fine because, you know, people's opinions are wrong sometimes, but that's okay. We have our learning moments, we have our wake up calls. This is your wake up call to get Kafka. Just saying. 3. Dual DPS or double DPS. Teams that have two DPS that engage with the enemies. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Best example of this team so far is Jing Liu and Blade in a dual DPS comp. Simple explanation. Jing Liu goes crazy, Jing Liu drains health, Blade becomes emo, gains stack for his AoE follow-up attack, Jing Liu goes again, Blade ticks again for the AoE, and then they attack, they ult it, profit. Now, in this team, you will run into some skill point issue, that's okay, because that's what a limited 5 star is there to fix. I am elation. I am elation. I am a sparkle. <laughs> 4. Debuff centric teams. Any team that gains more damage, the more debuffs the enemy has, or primarily centers around the enemy's debuffs for maximum damage. There are two DPS for this type of archetype so far in Honkai Star Rail. First off, our resident pillar man, Dr. Ratio, who scales higher the more debuffs the enemy has, or as I like to call it, the amount of negative IQ the enemy has. Dr. Ratio will then throw a chalk at him, gaining more damage the more debuff they have. Second, Acheron, who scales higher with more frequent debuff application on the enemy. 
or how many times in a row you can make them cringe or inflict them with the flu before jumping from the top rope with the medical bills. Truly a USA moment. <clears throat> Ooh, say can you see? I'm not American by the way, so judge me. Any team that deals damage mostly by initiating follow-up attack. Now, if you don't know, follow-up attack is an action where the team or the member of the team carries out an attack without consuming any skill point or turns. Things to note. So far, we don't have a complete follow-up attack team yet. Aventurine and Topaz, or as I like to call them, the IRS, ratio can be a pretty good candidate for the DPS Albeit, you need plenty of debuffs from other units to work. Or if you're a whale, you just pay to win everything. Pay to win his light cone, pay to win his team members' Eidolons, so on and so forth. Plus a Harmony character, maybe someone like a Ron Mei, like a Ting Yun, or maybe even a Robin, Wing Wink, looks to be a pretty strong contender for the follow-up attack teams. You can also put Sexy Brimstone and Anime Ultron on the list of follow-up attack DPSs. Do keep in mind though, that for each follow-up attack, there are certain mechanics and gimmicks that you need to look out for. Ratio needs to have certain debuffs on the enemy for them to work. Himiko needs to have weakness broken enemies a set number of times, so on and so forth. No, I am the one who knocks. Teams that employ a dedicated toughness breaker where the majority of the damage happens when they break the enemy's toughness. Depending on the element, it could have a diverse effect. The higher the break effect, the greater the damage slash effect on the enemy. Notable examples are Luka and Sushan. Both are physical DPSs, one being more focused on dealing high amounts of break, and the other dealing massive amounts of DPS while also that she's doing a solid amount of break damage. Boot Hill looks to be a pretty good combination of both of them. Of course, I wouldn't know because I really haven't seen the leaks, but, you know, wink wink. Currently, the strongest breaker element damage-wise in the game in order is physical, fire, wind, thunder, and ice. Shame it's not earth, wind, and fire. Quantum deals excellent damage if you stack break effect with a 5 stack mechanic after break, and imaginary just straight up sends them to the shadow realm. Results may vary. You can also invest in your DPS's break effect to make a hybrid break carry. Like the example with Sushong earlier. Basically, you build them with traditional crit value, but substitute most of the attack substats for break effect. Basically, a glass cannon sort of team. High damage, high rewards, very very low survivability chances, and you most likely die, or you most likely lose your hair after running the 800th attempt to make sure your Ching Shui crits, and to make sure your Ching Shui hits his autarky, and to make sure your Ching Shui doesn't really consume all that much skill point. Of course, if the enemy dies before your team does, you still win, so there's that. Zero cycle comps usually forgoes survivability for the max damage possible. Because of that, you can classify most zero cycle comps as a sustainless comps. Truly, you're playing a dangerous gamble, but if you succeed it, you win. Alright, I have no more jokes. Leave a sub, leave a like, hopefully, link in the description. Get out of here.